is a photograph of you as the geeky potato chip guy? A photograph of me in my book is the geeky potato potato chip guy, yeah. yeah uh, what's like the weirdest character you ever got in or tried to get just for like anything? Like nope. what, what char what's the weirdest character you ever tried to get like in film or in like TV shows? The weirdest character? The weirdest character I tried to get? Yeah. Weirdest role I tried to get? Yeah. That I didn't get? Mm -hmm. Either way. Which one do you think is the weirdest thing you ever came across? Weirdest. I don't go for weird, but <laughs> Bubba Hotep is the weirdest script I ever read. Because <laughs> as you watch it, a lot of people have recommended Bubba Hotep to other people. And if they can get past the first 30 seconds about him getting cancer on his penis and busting it by jacking off, <laughs> it's actually a really sweet little movie. <laughs> but I, I was at that first page and I was like, oh dear God, what is happening here? So I called, I read it and I enjoyed it, but I called Don Coscarillo and I said, I only have one question with regard to Baba Hotel. Will you see the penis? <laughs> he goes, no. I went, then I'm good. <laughs> if he was going to show that penis with cancer on it, <laughs> even this guy was gone. <laughs> My kid doesn't have to go to college that bad. <laughs> I never went to college. <laughs> yes? Is there any role you ever passed on that you wish you Every role I ever passed on, that's always a great question because the assumption is that I never have passed on anything. <laughs> I never passed on anything that I cared to pass on that I was sad later. Oh, that Star Wars role, oh! <laughs> Indiana Jones, oh! I should have said no to Stevie on that one. No, uh, things that I read in the script, if I don't respond to the script, because the script is the blueprint of your movie. If a script is bad, all you script writers out there, your movie will suck. Because <laughs> if your building is going this way, all the best builders are gonna build it that way. Yep, there's where the building's going. They're going to get that. So scripts are very important. So we'll have that script seminar a little bit later. Yes? As Sam acts in Burnos, how much alcohol do you consume, man? How much alcohol do I consume? Yeah. Have you ever seen Sam acts drunk on the show, sir? No! No, he's doing tactical missions. He's shooting long distances with rifles. With the gin and tonic on his left side. Yes, so? Yeah. He's, a, he's a former Navy SEAL. You ever seen the former Navy SEALs? When they're not getting shot at, they drink alcohol. And do I drink alcohol on the show? No. That's why I have brown bottles and green bottles. Never, rarely clear bottles. Because clear bottles, they go, oh, it's just water. But a brown bottle or a green bottle, you don't know, do you? <laughs> They kind of frown on actors drinking on sets these days. It's sort of a progressive thing that we worked on. <laughs> they're kind of over that. But then they've introduced Miller Genuine Draft on the show because they're getting money from them. So I have to say lines like, Mike, don't you want one? Come on, it's only 64 calories. <laughs> Back to the not getting shit uh, thing. Do I get a case of beer for saying that? Do they back up a truck, a Miller's truck, at my house? Oh, no! Another scene. Mike, I'm pissed. Now we can't go back out of that bar. And they had DirecTV in HD. Where's the HD set in every room in my house? Oops, we forgot your address. Now you realize why actors say those things in movies and TV shows. Every delivery is a FedEx truck. <laughs> Just like every person carrying groceries has to have a baguette sticking out of the top. <laughs> Why? I have no idea. <laughs> it is some weird tangents now. Yes, right here. Do I have the AOL address? Which one is that? <coughs> BC at AOL.com. Yes, I do. And I spend half my time going, no, it's really me. It's really me. <laughs> As I was going, no way! <sighs> yes way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right here. Sure, try. Um, Stand up so we can see it. The moment in Evil Dead 2. When, Evil Dead 2. Uh, when, when Ash puts on the chainsaw for the first time. When Ash puts on that chainsaw for the first like time. The most awesome moment in movie history. What was oh. that like for you? What was that like for me? Yeah. Did you think uh, major pain in the ass, that shot. Because <laughs> you had to. Cutting off, let's see, this hand with a chainsaw. No, no, I've already cut the hand off. That's right. 
This was, I'm, oh, I'm cutting my, my, my shotgun barrel in half. So um, it's got a fake gizmo that's making the blade run, because you don't really want to have a live chainsaw in your hand. <laughs> and you're positioning it in this, right in a certain position of the shotgun, and then they're setting some sparks off, which of course go right in your face. <laughs> and then you have to get a nice clean snap of the thing, and then you have to get the spin right, and then shove it into an oversized satchel on the back so it would stick. Because about, there's about 48 takes of me going, get the first eight tenths of it right. Yeah, Ooh, ha, ha. And it won't go anywhere near it. <laughs> so we just hooked up a large basket in the back so I could just aim it, throw it anywhere. <laughs> go in. So that equals cool, but shooting it was very clunky, awkward, and painful. <laughs> just like life. Yes, uh, back there, yeah. Who are you playing today? <laughs> I'm a fat, nerdy condor. <laughs> I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your Why the ears? <laughs> because I don't want to be one of those anime fans, but I had the ears laying around. Wait a second. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be those anime fans. <laughs> Those anime fans keep the lights on in this building. Those anime fans keep this suit on this body. Chuck Finley fans kept that suit on that body. You don't pay for television, do you? Oh, that's right, basic cable. You pay $20 a month. You pay $1.75 a month to watch Burn Notice. You thought you were going to have fun just standing up and asking the question. <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted me to ask if you're dressed as Chuck Finley right now. Who wanted you to? <laughs> Why don't you uh, stand up and ask if you're like, 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 like a man? Chuck Finley right now. Have you seen the show, sir? <laughs> Why, yes. I'm not done. <laughs> Tell that man to be quiet. <laughs> um, I'd rather talk about your ears. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really care, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you were doing Xena. When I was doing Xena. <laughs> see what you can do. Sometimes, sometimes scenes don't have an ending. You just sit and look at each other, the person across the table. Anyway, Mike, we're going to meet the guy at 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and you wait for a director to call a cut. So sometimes we add stuff like, we're going to meet the guy at 4 o'clock. And Bob's your uncle. <laughs> just, so whatever. Sometimes I, just, I, figure, I feel that producers always have the power of the edit. So if they don't like what I add, they can always take it out. But I only add stuff if I feel that it's 
organic. I don't need to put on the Bruce show wherever I go. You are playing a character. So the stuff that would be appropriate to your character and stuff is not. Very, yeah, it's very interesting.